You're making quite a meal of this. That was the general idea. You know, I was wondering... I've never kissed a man with a moustache before. <laughs> and I don't think I'm going to kiss a man with a moustache again. A British POW confronts his past in the new movie, The Railway Man, starring Colin Firth. Mm -hmm. He joins us now live from London. Good morning, Colin. Good morning. I am really looking forward to seeing this movie simply because my own family was uh, living in Singapore at the time of the Japanese occupation. Explain to us, who is Eric Lomax? Um, Eric Lomax was captured in Singapore in 1942, along with tens of thousands of others. Um, it was an attack which I think was presumed rather arrogantly by the, the British Empire uh, as impossible. The, the Japanese forces were underestimated and the British overestimated themselves. And as a result, uh, Singapore fell very, very quickly and these thousands of men were turned into slave labor and um, treated to the most uh, atrocious conditions, you know, and uh, a huge number of them died. Eric survived uh, unimaginable torture. And, uh, you know, our film doesn't make an attempt to cover the ensuing decades, but he, he eventually met a, ma a woman um, that he fell in love with fairly late in life, and that was the beginning of a healing process for him. But uh, not before he discovered that one of his tormentors during the war was still alive. And uh, he set out with the intention of killing him. Some uh, very heavy subject matter. But let's, we, okay, the King's Speech, Single Man, Pride and Prejudice, mm -hmm. Love Actually, Bridget Jones' Diary, and my kids recently discovered Nanny McPhee, which they love. Mm -hmm. Your films have reportedly earned over $3 billion. Colin, are you being paid enough? <laughs> I'm not seeing that figure. <laughs> um, you know, uh, I, uh, we could all be paid, uh, we could all fantasize about our pay packets. Um, I have to say, though, uh, even though that figure I've never heard before and it rather astounds me, uh, I have so much fun doing what I'm doing that mm -hmm. I do occasionally have to confess to feeling somewhat overpaid. I made the mistake of saying that to a couple of colleagues while I was sitting on a, on a, on a set one day looking out at a beautiful ocean and... Um, I was nearly actually thrown overboard into the water. <laughs> <laughs> Colin, you've been extremely successful in playing historical figures. Your father was and is or is uh, a history lecturer. Uh, did that have any, or did he have any influence on the roles that you choose today? Um, yes, but not because he has sat there advising me on them, but I think my father has been an immense influence on the way I approach things. Uh, and it's partly because uh, he is very much a model of integrity for me. Um, I, you know, he's somebody I've uh, grown to look up to more and more uh, through my life. You know, I think it was it Mark Twain who said, when I was 10, I thought my father was a fool, and when I was 20, I, I was surprised how much the old man had learnt in 10 years. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it's... Uh, go rebellious early stages through... Um, uh, acceptance into extraordinary admiration uh, for my dad. So I think that there's a piece of him in, a, in an awful lot and great number of the roles I've played. You know, you're constantly brought up in uh, publications as being one of the most sexy men in the world. And what, is this your quote, forget trying to be sexy, that's gruesome? <laughs> it's never worked. It's never it's worked? It's never worked, believe me. You don't want to... No, no, you know, you don't want to see the films in which I've tried to be sexy. <laughs> no one remembers those. Colin Firth, thank you so much for joining us this morning.